In this video, you're going to learn everything that you need to know about PvP in Cataclysm Classic. WoW's third expansion was pretty revolutionary, and um, some would even say it was a bit controversial. In some ways, it marked the end of Classic WoW as we know it, with Azeroth literally being torn apart and the entire world being redesigned from the ground up. Now, because of this, some players think Kata marks the downfall of World of Warcraft, but for others, Kata was a high point in the game, since it made many quality of life improvements to class design and introduced some of the most iconic and cherished abilities of all time. So who's right here? Is Kata going to be a massive flop, or is it going to actually live up to the hype? Well, let's find out. And while you're waiting for the expansion to release, be sure to check out skillcap.com. We are the number one resource for learning World of Warcraft retail and classic with hundreds of hours of exclusive video content that we designed alongside the world's best players, including BlizzCon winners for WoW PvP and even six-time MDI champions for our new Mythic Plus website. And by the time Cataclysm launches, we're going to have revamped our classic site to get you instantly ready to dominate the next expansion. We even have two additional websites for League of Legends and Valorant if that's also your thing, and everything that we offer is covered under one subscription and a rank up guarantee that promises to deliver results. Yeah, that's right, we actually guarantee that you're gonna gain rating across any of our games while using our site. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links below to get started with an exclusive discount offer. To kick things off, let's get into what you can expect from Cataclysm if you're coming from Wrath of the Lich King Classic, starting with the talent trees. Throughout Vanilla to Wrath, the base talent tree really didn't change much. There were additional points added every expansion and a few tweaks here and there, but overall the base talents, they all stayed the same. Now this all shifted in Cataclysm, however, as Blizzard condensed the trees to be less confusing for people. Removing the archaic, outdated nodes from a time before classes really had a true identity. An example of this is removing the Elemental Devastation talent for Elemental Shamans. Since Ellie's were now pretty distinguished as a caster, that's not going to be whacking anyone with their one-hander if they can help it. The outcome of these talent changes were trees that just made sense to what the classes had developed into, albeit with only 41 talent points to play with rather than the 71 in Wrath. So due to this, there were far more cookie cutter builds and a lot less theory crafting than in previous expansions. However, with the added abilities that the expansion brought, this didn't feel like a limiting factor at all. Abilities added in Cataclysm were so iconic, useful, and fun in fact, that a bunch of them are still in the modern version of the game today, like Mage's Ring of Frost, Rogue's Smoke Bomb, and Priest's Leap of Faith. And in addition, there were many more added across the board, which makes the game feel incredibly fresh and new coming from Wrath. Now, along with the talent tree revamp and added abilities, Blizzard further enhanced character customization by updating the glyph system to include prime glyphs. These were glyphs that had a similar power scaling to major glyphs in Wrath, allowing players to gain another three extra slots to enrich their gameplay. So be it through passive damage increases like Glyph of Ice Lance, or gameplay altering glyphs like Glyph of Dispersion. No matter the class, these prime glyphs gave an immense power spike and made you feel like your character was truly something unique to you. If you're coming from retail, this may seem overwhelming, but don't worry because we're gonna be here to guide you along with our upcoming talent videos closer to Cataclysm's release. So moving away from talents now, the next huge change from Wrath and Retail is the pace of the game. Everything is far slower. Haste levels in Cataclysm, especially in the first two seasons where PvE gear isn't as prevalent, are incredibly low, slowing down both casting speed and global cooldowns. So this change of pace allows games to be far more about setups and timing your damage at opportune times, which is both a huge contrast to the spammy nature of Retail and the fast-paced gameplay of Wrath Arena. Fortunately, accompanying this change is a huge buff to mana regeneration for both healers and casters. So what this means is that you won't go oom nearly as fast as you would in Wrath, especially if you pick up a spirit trinket like Dark Moon card Tsunami, which even procs off heal over time effects. Oh, and if you're a hunter coming from Wrath, mana is no longer an issue as Cataclysm introduced the focus system. 
So if you're coming from retail to classic, you won't feel that much of a difference here. Now, this isn't to say that mana isn't a factor in Cataclysm games, though, as this can still be a core win condition throughout the expansion, especially due to the lack of dampening. Yeah, that's right, dampening still hasn't been introduced at this point in the game, which is both a blessing or a curse depending on your preferred playstyle. What this means is that games can go on for a lot longer than retail if healers are able to drink, and compositions that rely on crowd control don't get weaker as the game goes on, as it's far less punishing for the game to extend. Now, speaking of setups, much like Wrath of the Lich King, Cataclysm crowd controls are a lot longer than retail, with incapacities and fears generally lasting 8 seconds on the first application, and then dropping down to 4 and 2 seconds on further uses. This makes crowd control far more worthwhile to push in for, and gives the potential for risky plays to be a lot more valuable. Cataclysm also still uses the old diminishing return system, with spells like Cyclone only diminishing with itself, Scatter not diminishing with Trap, and Mortal Coil and Psychic Core having their own horrified diminishing return. So there's far more composition variety and different synergies between the classes. If you hate crowd control though, don't let this put you off, as unlike retail, there is far less micro CCs with instant stuns and random disorients, as well as far less clutter on your screen in general, making the game far less of a headache to play. So as a final note here, Cataclysm was all about snapshotting, a mechanic that all damage over time effects would have to play around, as well as Death Knights with their gargoyle. Unlike retail, your damage over time effects and minions would not update their values as trinket procs or buffs are applied. This meant that whenever your trinket would proc, you would need to reapply all your damage over time effects and then try to maintain them for as long as possible afterwards as they would continue to be empowered by these procs. Snapshotting resulted in a huge difference between damage outputs from good and bad players and is one of the mechanics many high-rated players look back on fondly from Cataclysm. All right, so let's get into the gearing process in Cataclysm, which if the game is identical to back in the day, it's gonna be one hell of a grind. For starters, Battlegrounds, Tol Barad, and Weekly Victory Quests will be your go-to chores to max out your PvP gear, but with big ticket items costing 2200 honor and BG victories only granting 400 honor each, it's easy to see how this can be a turnoff for some. Now there is a light at the end of this tunnel though, as there was a similar issue with Wrath of the Lich King Classic, which Blizzard quickly addressed by buffing honor gains, so this initial tedious grind may not end up being so bad after all. So outside of the initial honor grind, you're going to be looking to cap your conquest weekly through either raided battlegrounds or the arena bracket of your choosing. Just take note that RBGs grant the biggest cap per rating, followed by 5s, 3s, then 2s. Now, some of you coming from Wrath may be wary of the amount of PvP gear that you're going to need to be competitive, which is a fair concern considering how much raiding you needed to do in all the other classic expansions to be on an even playing field as everyone else. Fortunately though, in Cataclysm, PvE gear pales in comparison to PvP gear throughout the entire first season, with only bind on equipped Darkmoon cards like Tsunami and Volcano being sought after. So the only raid you're really going to need to be running is the very short Baradin's Hold, which drops current season PvP gloves, legs, and off pieces throughout the entire expansion. So moving through to Season 10, PvE gear starts to get more powerful with the introduction of Firelands. Especially with the legendary staff Dragon Wrath, Gosa's Rest, and the Ragnarosh Trinket, Variable Pulse Lightning Capacitor being best in slot for casters. And as for Season 11, PvE gear actually does become pretty strong across the board with Dragon Soul's release. This is where iconic items like Girthalak, Cunning of the Cruel, and the Legendary Rogue Daggers really come into play, which are so powerful that some players view them as mandatory. So moving away from the items themselves though, Cataclysm also brought about a new way to customize your gear with reforging. This mechanic allows players to swap 40% of an undesired secondary stat on an item for something else, meaning that you didn't necessarily need best in slot stats to hit the values that you really wanted. This was especially strong if you wanted to respec, as you could just quickly reforge your items and have a half viable setup without farming extra gear. Since Cataclysm also had the introduction of the mastery stat, 
which was best in slot for specs like Frost Mage, but unwanted for fire, it's easy to see why the addition of reforging is held in such high regard here. Do just be aware that you could not reforge resilience though, so stacking up on PvE gear is going to end up with you being incredibly squishy. So as for professions, these were another incredibly powerful way to enhance your character too, with strong soulbound bonuses ranging from passive stat increases to unused damage modifiers. However, not all professions were built equal here, so do be prepared for everyone on your server to be a tailor due to its cloak enchant proc, which would grant 1,000 attack power to melees, 580 intellect to casters, or 580 spirit to healers. And considering that in Season 9, healers had a base spirit of around 1.2k, it's no wonder this profession is so prevalent. Other common professions included blacksmithing for the extra two sockets it provided, as well as engineering, which allowed you to have a one minute cooldown, 480 main stat buff, or 10 seconds, which sadly shares CD with other unused trinkets, but it was still a good option. But generally, everything had its place, unless you're adamant on picking up skinning with its 80 crit rating or mining with its 120 stamina increase. All right, so we covered the changes and we've covered the gear, so let's finish off with how the meta is gonna look. Throughout Cataclysm, some of the strongest compositions revolved around marksmanship hunters. Hunters are so powerful, in fact, that Cataclysm was the first and only times a hunter won BlizzCon, with Jungiup's team defeating Snuts, Pooks, and Toe's Magelock in 2011. The source of hunter strength comes from three things. Their huge potential crowd control with Scatter, Trap, and Monkey Stun, their 25% Mortal Strike from Widow Venom, and their huge burst potential with Chimera Shot paired with Careful Aim. Because of these factors, hunters can find success with almost every melee in the game, as they can create setups on their own and single-handedly deal enough pressure to land kills with only a little assistance. The other super-dominant class in Cataclysm are Feral Druids, who are currently the bane of literally every private server. Feral Druids deal crazy high damage with their bleeds, have access to instant cyclones with predator swiftness, and unlike in retail WoW, are a complete brick wall to hit into. This is largely because bear form reduces their incoming damage by 18%, as well as all the armor that it brings. And even if they are caught in cat form, they're gonna still be taking 20% increased healing. You can expect to see ferals playing with classes like hunters, warlocks, and mages, with their consistent damage and instant CC can really shine. So moving on, melee cleaves are also really strong in the start of Cataclysm. However, they do taper off as the seasons go on and casters gain a power spike, mainly involving a death knight for their strong damage and their anti-caster mechanics. Melee cleaves were the definition of Zug Zug in Cataclysm, aiming to obliterate their opponents through raw damage and stun locks. Popular melee cleaves in Cataclysm included Warrior Death Knight, Rhett DK, Feral Warrior, and Rogue Death Knight. Moving on, you're also going to be running into quite a few Affliction Warlocks playing RLS with a playstyle much more oriented around setups than the passive Triple Cleave of Retail, as well as plenty of Rogue Mages, where Mages have Deep Freeze and an Instant Ring of Frost for huge cross-crowd control potential. And who could forget about all those Red Paladin Triple DPS Cleaves like Red Hunter Rogue and Red Hunter DK? Later on in the expansion, you can start to see more spell cleaves too, with compositions like Mage Lock and Boomkin Lock benefiting hugely from Cunning of the Cruel. As far as healers go, expect to see a lot of Restoration Shamans with their strong instant heals, ability to dispel both curses and magic debuffs, and high disruption with Grounding Totem and Wind Shear. You can also expect to see quite a few Holy Paladins, as they can enable melee cleaves pretty well through their freedoms, blessing of protections, and blessing of sacrifices. As well as Disc Priests, who offer an offensive dispel and high damage, while also having great damage reduction abilities with Dome and Pain Suppression. The only healers that you won't really see much of are Restoration Druids, as they're very vulnerable to being trained and don't have much reactive healing instead of relying on proactively hotting targets on incoming damage. And Holy Priest, who are a little bit more niche in 3s and pop up more in 2v2 with its old rendition of Lightwell and the high mobility of Shield Sprint. So what do you think? Will Cataclysm be good? We're personally very excited for the return of snapshotting and a more crowd control heavy meta for a nice contrast to Dragonflight. 
as well as the ability to customize your gear with reforging and glyphs, giving a nice breath of fresh air compared to being pigeonholed into one path. So let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.